Hi there, my name is Deanna Hansen. I'm the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy, and I am so very excited about this conversation. This is with Lynn Crawford. So welcome, Lynn, first of all. I'm so happy you're taking the time to share your incredible transformation and journey with our community. I'm thrilled to be here. Awesome, awesome, great. Um, so yeah, the reason, first of all, everybody, that I have asked Lynn to be on with us is because she has had some absolutely incredible transformations to her body, to her wellness, her whole journey. So I just really wanted to share with you just to give people that hope and excitement about the benefits of what block therapy can do. So Lynn, I would love it if you would just come out. Um, first of all, give us a little bit of history about where you started before you found us with block therapy so people can really get a nice understanding of, of who you are. Sure. So I've, I've had chronic pain for a really, really long time, as long as I can remember. Um, been diagnosed with many things that the medications never worked, nothing ever helped. Um, and finally was diagnosed with uh, EDS hypermobility disorder. And so I've gone to physical therapy, done fascial massage, um, all kind of different things like that. Weight loss, I've tried absolutely everything, a pill, a shot, a shake, a tea, wrap me in cellophane like I don't care I've tried everything um and so in beginning of 2021 I had gone to an acupuncturist and it was the first time I'd ever done acupuncture and I felt as I was laying there with the needles in me it felt like the needles were connected and these spiraling lines were connecting every single needle in my body and so as I kept going back, I started developing twitches and involuntary movements in my body that were doing it without the needles being there. And so it was constant. And I was just looking everywhere online, trying to figure out what in the world's going on with me, what's happening. And I came across one of your videos. And so I had a call with you back in 2021. And of course, you were so genuine and kind and like, yeah, I definitely think this could help you. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but it could help you. So I got my blocks and I started and just the self-diagnosed, I guess, to meet the inflammation and the emotions and trauma that were trapped in that inflammation, it just all started releasing. And I would be blocking I'd get off work at three and start blocking and nine hours would pass. And I was having, I mean, horrible, horrible side effects physically and emotionally. I was really hurting because just so much stuff was dumping, but I couldn't stop because my body was just going, this, this is what I need. This is what I want. So I've, I've just stuck with it. And so far I've, I've weight loss. I've lost a hundred pounds. Um, and I that just have a question. Means, so you've lost, yeah. you've lost 100 pounds in three years. Yes. And so um, I know you had shared that prior to that, you had tried a whole bunch of everything. Um, besides the addition of blocking, did anything else change from the perspective of focusing on weight loss? No, I, I had gotten to a place where I had been working out. And when I was diagnosed with the EDS, um, they told me, well, your weight loss is going to have to be something other than exercise. And so I was not exercising at all when I started blocking. Now I'll go for a walk, but really like my block is what I do. I stay on my blocks when I have extra time. Um, I keep saying I want to dive into the workout part of the blocks, the Quinn's part, but um, I'm still working on trying to unwind some stuff. So still going to be a little while before I get into that. Wow. Okay. So with the Ehlers-Danlos, uh, can you get a little bit more specific about what kind of issues and pains you were experiencing on a regular basis? Sure. So a lot of it, of course, my joints are very unstable. I'll wake up and my shoulders subluxed or, you know, um, I've had a knee surgery where they tried to cage in my kneecap. That didn't work, but I have a lot of scar tissue there. And um, then I think just I have a lot of back pain. It's just a lot, a lot of pain and very loose. My ribs slip. Um, so all of those things that 
physically were there is the block has helped. I had tried uh, dry needling and physical therapy. I actually did the concussion pilot while I was in physical therapy for my left shoulder and it was just getting worse. And so I, to me, I was doing so much work on my head and my face. And then that shoulder, it was kind of stopping there as it was unwinding, it was stopping in that shoulder. And so I would go to physical therapy and try to work out and it would just make it so much worse. And so several times, you know, I've sent you a picture and said, okay, where, where do I need to look at? Cause something's not right. And you always keep pointing me back to my right ankle. And I guess it was, it must've been like January, 2022. <laughs> I had gotten a feet up, um, I don't know, I guess it's a, a handstand kind of assist. And it's this little wooden thing that you can put your shoulders on and assist while you do a handstand. And so I thought I was gonna be really cool. I was losing weight and I was gonna be able to do a handstand. So I got up on it and I couldn't get off. And so I wound up falling off of it and landing on my right foot and wound up in the emergency room, that right ankle. I thought I had broken my ankle. And of course they said, no, you know, it's just a sprain or whatever. And so since then, the left shoulder and everything has gotten so much worse and it feels like it's a direct line from my right ankle spiraling up into that left shoulder. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm working a ton on that ankle now. Wow. So it, it's incredible because like you've just so tapped in and like you're really sensing all of these interconnections throughout your whole body. So um, from the perspective of the emotional stuff, uh, can you share a little bit more about that? Because I know that can be really mm -hmm. challenging for people when we're pulling up all this deep seated trauma and old garbage really that like is actually coming up to leave um could you just share a little bit about your journey with that and how you how you deal with that of course so before i had started blocking i guess um a couple of years before i had started blocking i had gone to a hypnotherapist to try to lose weight she's going to hypnotize me to lose weight um but one of the really cool things that she had done was while i was under hypnosis she said you know you're walking through a garden and you see a tree and there's dead branches on it. And those are the things that you no longer need in your life or, you know, and so you take those out, you no longer need them. Um, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And that night I had vivid dreams of childhood things that I had completely forgotten about. I mean, detailed conversations. And the next day, a physical detox symptoms, I felt terrible. But then when that passed, I just felt so much lighter. And then, I was like, okay, well, there's something to this. And I'd kind of forgotten about that or, you know, haven't done it anymore. And then when I started blocking, I started noticing that every time I would block, that tree would pop up in my mind. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. So I was like, okay, well, I'll try it. So I'm laying there on the block, you know, and I'm like, okay, go to the tree and pick the dead stuff off that no longer belongs there. And every night I would have vivid dreams of things that had happened that I had completely forgotten about. Physical detoxing a week later, wherever I had been blocking would just loosen up and start just unraveling even more deeper layers. It's the weirdest, coolest thing. Um, so like, I guess one of the recent examples, um, we were doing the lower body challenge. And when I had gotten on the call and one of the exercises you had us do, I started shaking so bad and I was crying and sweating and I was like, something's really wrong. Uh, and you told me, go do the grief class. And so that night I did the grief class and within 10 minutes of finishing the grief class, I was curled up in a ball on the floor crying with something I've been dealing with for 16 years, just completely letting go. And where we had put the block kind of on the chest and over the heart, it felt like my ribs were just separating and loosening and so much space was being gained in and around my heart. It sounds so wild, but it's just so cool. Um, and so I think just, you know, for me personally, there was so much inflammation and so much just trapped that I've tried forever to physically manage and deal with, but no matter what I tried, the emotional part was still affecting me so much. I couldn't lose weight. I couldn't function. I couldn't do anything. I love how you're tying the inflammation into the size. 
because I mean, I, I share so frequently that it's not like we are increasing the number of fat cells in our body. We're storing inflammation, we're storing toxins. And so do you, do you have a whole different sense now on how to manage your body when it comes down to this? And, and does eating even come into play in your mind when you're thinking about managing your size and shape? I eat what I want. I eat a lot less and I would, you know, I have goals of being like a clean eater and paleo and vegan and all these things, but I see a pizza and I go for it. Um, but I think it's, I approach it differently. I'm a very emotional eater. I'm from the South. I'm a comfort food. Um, so the amount I've eaten has definitely changed. Um, but I think it, I really, really, I just pin it on inflammation and trauma and emotion because it feels like now, especially blocking, it feels like I'm just now starting to block my body and I'm starting to go into my body where up until this point, it's been all this stuff in the way of my body. And so now I'm finally getting to me and it's really cool. I know there's, there's so many layers and I can feel there's so much junk that has to be blocked out, but where before it was just, I'm blocking something that's there and there's something in my way. And now when I put the block on, I'm like, Oh, the blocks on me. Wow. So that's really cool. That is so cool. I, you know, one of the mm -hmm. things that I love sharing is that as we keep diving through these adhesions, we connect more deeply with the cells that are deeper than what we're consciously aware of and, and the gifts that come from that, you know, like mm -hmm. all of the creative insights that you were born with to share with the world. Like this is the, this is the area now that you're, you're going to be tapping into on such a different level. That is so exciting. And I just love your whole explanation of this because I mean, th that is how I also communicate about it. We, we need to get rid of the old stuff before we can really find our way and, and to understand that, um, the, the whole concept of weight loss. I don't even like calling it weight loss. I like calling it size loss space gain because when you gain that space and your body becomes aligned, then we have that opportunity to move those toxins that much more efficiently out of the body so that we can keep our cells, you know, in their relaxed state. And like, that's another thing too about blocking that I really love to share. You know, some people will say, I'm underweight, what's going to happen? And then other people are like, mm -hmm. I'm overweight, what's going to happen? And, and really what it comes down to is it provides for your body what your body needs, whatever that may be. And, and that's also kind of what I'm hearing from you is, you know, there, there's, a, there's a hope and a faith now because you have a practice and we are all on this timeline of, you know, however long we are on this planet. But while we are, we have something that we can keep utilizing for our body that's going to continue to support us, not only with our physical health, but our emotional well-being and also just managing this crazy world that we're, we're so full of toxins in this world that, I mean, we need something to be able to support the body to make sure that it stays as clean as possible so that we can feel ourselves, ourselves and, and thrive. So I just, I, I really appreciate you sharing all of this. Um, I'd love for you to share it like, Approximately how long every day are you blocking now? It varies. It really does. Um, some days I don't block and then I wish I had. <laughs> if I go, I try to block every day. If I go a few days without blocking, I can feel the lines. They're spiraling lines connecting and I can feel them start to tighten and shorten. And so I start getting pulled back down very quickly. So I really do try to do it every day. Um, I have a 16 year old and a seven year old. So as much as my seven year old will let me, you know, my 16 year old loves it cause I don't bother her while I'm blocking. Um, but my seven year old will block with me and she's requested for Christmas, the, um, the pets class because she wants to block on our dog. Um, so she'll come and block on the baby with me and my mom blocks with me and my husband blocks with me some. Um, so I, I try to do it at least a class, usually a 30 minute class. If I can squeeze two in, if I'm having a really busy day, 
but if it's a weekend or I don't have anything to do that night, I'll just free block for a few hours if I can. I, I really do block as much as I can. And some days my pain is up there and I don't do a class, but I'll do all the way down my legs while I'm watching TV. And then I'll do, you know, down the sides of my ribs. So I do a lot of free blocking. Um, and it's just, I can, I can feel like on that line going down or going through my body, it's like wherever the block is, I can feel where that line's going and where that next tight space is. And so I just kind of follow it and chase the pain. Wow, amazing. Um, I love that you're getting your family uh, involved a little um, bit. Like that's one of the my, my biggest goals is, is to really, because it we are such a strong community of women and to be able to reach the kids and our spouses and, and, you know, parents, even it's, it's such a beautiful thing when you've got somebody in the family, especially when the family can see physically the changes, observe the emotional improvements and, and all of those things. Um, okay. Here's a random weird question. Is there something that it hasn't done for you that you wish it would do? I wish I had no pain. I wish my joints would be stable, but I know that's not going to happen. Probably. <laughs> um, it's already been such a miracle. Why would I ask for more? Hmm. Beautiful answer. Um, it's, it's been absolutely everything. And I don't, I get, kind of jealous. I wish I could talk to people about it more because I see all these people on the calls like, oh, I told my neighbor and I told this. I feel very self-conscious telling people about it because they think I'm crazy with my little wooden blocks. Um, but, you know, everybody's so different and I don't expect somebody sitting next to me to go block for three years and lose 100 pounds. Um, but this is what it did for me. And I think when I found the blocks, I let go of I have to lose weight and I just started saying, I, I just want to not hurt as much and be able to get up and play with my kids. And so I think when I let go of that expectation and let go of I'm doing this to be smaller, that's when it started tapping into the emotional and all the other things that were causing all the inflammation and the weight. I fully believe that as you continue, those other pieces will come. That not that will ever, I mean, I still have pain 25 years in, but I fully believe that you will gain that stability in your joints and that you're only going to keep moving forward. Because as you said, like you're just now really touching your actual body yeah. before you were touching all of this, the past. So now you're in the present and now you can really start the rebuilding phase. So I'm very excited for you and I'm going to make sure that um, anything that you need, I'm, I'm here with you because I want to interview you a year from now and I want to hear that those other two things are at least in the process of improvement. So <laughs> that's the goal. Yeah. Um, again, I just really want to thank you for your vulnerability and your authenticity and willingness to come and to share. Is there anything else that you really want our listeners to know um, about Ehlers Danlos, about weight loss, about chronic pain, or just about the whole process of block therapy in general? I think. Like I'm on the Facebook group and I think the thing that I want to say to so many people, especially coming in new, is you see all these things. I mean, I've done the fascia blasters. I've done all these things and I just always felt like, okay, well, I'm just going to go spend my money and maybe. And not everything works for everybody, but several times when I first started blocking, I stopped. Um detox symptoms. I would overdo it and have horrible pain for a week. And I'm like, this doesn't work. Um, but I just kept at it because something inside me was like, no, this is, this is it. This is what you need. And so don't be scared to jump in and start. It's, it's a money commitment. It's a time commitment, but so is surgery. So is everything else. And so I, I can't sing your praise is enough. I, I just can't. There'll, there'll never be anything. This has been a miracle for me in my life. And so I'm really, really thankful for that. Uh, but yeah, and just, you know, I see a lot on the Facebook group. The community is so wonderful. And I even get caught up in comparing myself. 
And I'm like, I can't do that because everybody's journey is so different where mine might be, you know, I need the grief class for an emotional release on the left side of my chest. This person might need the vagus nerve class for release somewhere else. Like it's, it's never going to be, oh, I did this class that you told me to do and it didn't work. So it doesn't work. It's just constantly seeking that pain, seeking where your body needs to go, where your emotions need to go and trusting it. You, you, I, I had to really let go and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cancel all my plans tonight. I'm going to block for six hours. And once I started doing that and really making it a part of me and a part of my life, it just started sp spiraling, literally unraveling and in the best possible way. Wow. Well, Lynn, thank you so very much. This has been incredibly informative and I am just so grateful that you're here. And again, I'm going to touch base with you in a year and have you back on so we can continue to see your incredible progress. And to all of our listeners, thank you so much for taking the time and keep posted. There's going to be so much more to come. Bye everyone.